All right, so let's start this broadcast with the big story that we are tracking on Vyond at this hour. Today, Pakistan is, of course, voting in its national elections. But there's been violence that has taken place where at least about five policemen have been killed in a blast near a police van in Dera Ismail Khan district. Now, earlier in the day, one security personnel was killed in an attack on security forces vehicle in the same area. Now, the elections, that is the casting of ballots, will end in another 30 minutes from now. The polls are being held in the shadow of back-to-back -back terror attacks that have taken place in the country. But prominent political parties have alleged rigging of polls as the intention behind the mobile services that have been shut down. Now, the former Prime Minister Imran Khan led the Pakistan Tariq e Insaf party has called the mobile services shut down as an outrageous act of electoral rigging. Meanwhile, the former Foreign Minister Bilawal Bhutto's Pakistan People's Party leaders have also called the internet shutdown as the beginning of poll rigging. Now, his party workers have also approached the election commission against the mobile services being shut down. The caretaker government, however, has maintained that all political parties are being given equal opportunity in these elections. The Interior Ministry has also set up a control room to monitor the election security and teams from home departments, the police, the election commission and the concerned agencies are monitoring the security situation around the clock through the control room. The Pakistan's election commission has said that it is prepared for a possible mobile services shutdown, adding that its systems are not affected by the same. But the election commission of Pakistan has also established a telephone helpline number to lodge any complaints that people may have. The Commonwealth delegation, which has been the part of the interna international observers present at different polling stations in the country, have expressed satisfaction with the polling process in the nation. But Pakistan's own Human Rights Council has alleged that the shutting down of mobile and internet services on election day is a cause of serious concern. Meanwhile, prominent leaders are headed to, headed to the polling stations. The three-term Prime Minister and the front runner in these elections, Nawaz Sharif, cast his vote in Lahore. Now remember, Nawaz Sharif has been cleared of all corruption charges and is now eyeing for a fourth term as the Prime Minister in these elections. Now, Asifa Bhutto, the daughter of the former Prime Minister Benazir Bhutto, also cast her vote. She's called on the citizens of Pakistan to step out and vote. The top PTI leaders, on the other hand, most of whom remain in jail, cast their votes through postal ballots. Amongst others, the former Prime Minister Imran Khan, the former Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi, and also the former Punjab Chief Minister Parvez Ilahi voted via mail from Rawal Pindi's Adiala prison, where they are currently lodged. And not only the leaders, from Karachi to Rawal Pindi to Islamabad and Peshawar, the Pakistani voters turned up at the polling booths across the nation to cast their ballot. Interestingly, some voters also made some pretty perilous journeys of over 100 kilometers to cast their votes in Pakistan. All right, now to give us more perspective in terms of what, of course, is happening in these elections and why these elections are so important for Pakistan, we're being joined by... Um, Former Ambassador Abdul Basit, who's joining us live from Islamabad, is the former High Commissioner for India and also the former Ministry of Foreign Affairs spokesperson. Uh, Ambassador Basit, thank you very much indeed, sir, for taking time out and speaking to us here on Vyond. And let me, in fact, start off by asking you this question. Uh, you know, a lot of people who are looking at what is happening in, in these elections. They say, you know, how much ground do you think Pakistan has ended up losing diplomatically? due to poll instability and how much it will cover with these elections. Uh, thank you very much for having me. Uh, I think elections in any country, in any democratic system uh, are part and parcel of uh, a country's growth. Uh, and uh, in Pakistan too, we have been looking forward to the, these elections. And I'm sure that as a result of these elections, uh, whosoever is able to form, a, form the next government uh, Pakistan uh, would be put on a on a positive trajectory, and uh, uh, many things which uh, have been pending for long, uh, we would be able to uh, get our act together. And uh, this is a positive development in my view. <clears throat> right now, you know, 
Internationally and even within Pakistan, I'm pretty sure there's this chatter that no sitting prime minister in Pakistan has been able to complete five-year term. Do you think in the aftermath of these elections, the person who ever gets elected will be able to complete the next five-year term as the prime minister in the country? I wish I had a crystal ball, but uh, uh, it is encouraging to see that uh, at least uh, uh, three uh, national assemblies uh, did complete their five-year term though there have been change of uh, prime ministers, but uh, the National Assemblies uh, were not resolved. They completed their five-year term since 2008. So that in itself, I think, is, is something which uh, should be celebrated in the context of Pakistan. And one hopes that uh, the next National Assembly would also be able to, uh, not only the National Assembly, but whosoever becomes a prime minister, would also be complete uh, his or her tenure for a five-year tenure. But so long as assemblies uh, continue to complete their tenure, because if if a change occurs from within the system, that and according to the constitution, that should be okay for everyone. But uh, I think uh, one looks forward. You know, we are very right. optimistic about this, about our system, the way things are at present. Now, Pakistan is geostrategically very important internationally. Now, as a former diplomat, how do you think, Ambassador Basit, the world is looking at these elections that are playing out in Pakistan at this moment? I think there is a huge interest uh, as to who will form the next government in Pakistan because uh, there are, uh, you, as you know, that in the region itself, uh, we are in a deadlock situation with India. Uh, with Afghanistan, we have some issues. Uh, even uh, recently, we had a problem with Iran as well. Uh, and then uh, our relations, the strategic partnership with China, uh, also uh, witnessed some uh, misunderstandings. And then uh, our relations with, with the US. So I think the world at large must be looking uh, with great interest as to who will be forming the next government in Pakistan because uh, uh, we would like to be seen as moving ahead, particularly in the context of our economic development, uh, to have more and more investment, foreign direct investment in Pakistan and also in the context of our commerce, our trade. <clears throat> Now, at this moment, uh, Ambassador Basit, the fact is, you know, people are looking at how Pakistan is also pursuing its foreign policy. Under Imran Khan, there was this impression that went around the world that perhaps Imran Khan, by taking a very hard position against the West, against the United States, probably ended up isolating Pakistan on the international stage. Now, I know you don't have a crystal ball to gaze into, but a lot of speculation within Pakistan now says that the prediction is probably it's Nawaz Sharif who may return as the Prime Minister for the fourth time. Do you think Nawaz Sharif, if he becomes the Prime Minister, will be able to mend fences with the West and you know, end Pakistan's diplomatic isolation? I think during the last government, the PDM government, which, uh, uh, which we had for, more than, for about 16 months, things have uh, improved uh, with the US. Uh, and uh, if Mr. Nawaz Shari becomes uh, the, the Prime Minister for a fourth term, uh, I think things will get better. Uh, but that process uh, has already begun. Uh, so uh, I do not see any massive uh, change in our relationship with the US because uh, if you look at the global dynamics, the way things are working, since we have a strategic partnership with China, that relationship is very, very important for Pakistan. So our transactional nature of relationship with the U.S. will continue so long as it serves some of our mutual interests. So beyond that, I do not see as to how we can really put uh, uh, in, or inject more substance into this relationship. Beyond, I mean, there are possibilities for economic cooperation and for other things. But uh, as far as the relationship is concerned, I think during the PDM government, things have uh, started becoming better. Mm -hmm. Right. Interesting. Now, one of the issues that over the course of the last decade that has been talked about a lot internationally and also within Pakistan is, is the problem that the Pakistani economy has sunk into. The problem of inflation and as to have growth simply has eluded the Pakistani economy. The question that I want to ask you, Ambassador Basit, is a lot of people say that the reason why Pakistan has sunk is not just domestic, 
but also its diplomatic isolation. So the question is, what are the people in Pakistan, especially the youth, looking for from their government at this moment? No, I think Pakistan has never been isolated, though I would agree and to agree with you that Pakistan has been uh, through many uh, rough, uh, I mean, has been through a rough phase economically. But I think those things were mostly because of our internal mismanagement, lack of good governance and uh, to a certain extent corruption. Uh, so I one hopes that our uh, political leaders have learned from their past mistakes and uh, the next government will be able to put its act together. Because as you know, that uh, the first principle of any good foreign policy is good governance at home. So uh, Pakistan is an important country, it's strategically located. Uh, we, can be a, we can become a bridge uh, between East and West because we straddle both I mean, South Asia, West Asia, Central Asia. So Pakistan, uh, is blessed with its uh, with many things. Uh, the question is how uh, how intelligently and deftly we we exploit these advanced things to our advantage at the end of the day. Interesting. Thank you very much indeed, Ambassador Basit, Thank for joining us and getting us that perspective there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.